Hey everybody, I'm Kevin and this is Scout. He's definitely not a dog. He's a California desert tortoise and a really cool one. We live right here in the heart of Los Angeles, but behind these gates is a really cool world I want to share with you. Come on in. All right, let's go, let's go. Hey Max, my friends have affectionately called this place tortoise land and for good reason. For the past 15 years, I've been helping tortoises of all kinds, sizes, species, and I'm really excited to be announcing the launch of our show, The Tortoise Guy, because I want to do everything I can to let you know how cool these guys are and how much we need to do to help save them. The first episode you're about to see is by a documentary filmmaker named Chuck Coleman, and it's about tortoise land, how it started, and how it became what it is. So I hope you enjoy it, and when you're done watching it, me and Scout will be waiting for you. Enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah, hey, Chuck Coleman, is Kevin. How are you doing? It's Monday. Uh, this Wednesday, I am taking most of my babies with me to work. And then after work, I'm driving up to the valley to a woman that's a member of the tortoise organization. And she is going to take them up to Central California to a woman up there that can raise them in a much better place than I can. I'm going to hang on to a couple of the rest I have, which are going to be about 16 of them or 17 are all going to go. So if you were serious about that and you wanted to shoot some video of me with them or of them or whatever, I just wanted you to know that that's the story. Love this guy. He was a rescue from the Burbank Pound. So in the, the organization I'm a member of, they called me probably seven years ago and they said we got this California desert tortoise at the Burbank Pound, would you take him? And I always wanted one because I had always read about them. These guys are super inquisitive. What's great about them is they don't get huge, you know? And uh, he's a boy and uh, he loves, he's like Max, he follows me around. He has a chronic respiratory thing. What we're looking at here, we've got his feeding tube coming through his neck there and into his stomach. And we gave him some barium so that we could make sure that that was in a good place. Um, but then what we can also see, and I think it's further down in his GI tract, he's got a number of foreign bodies. So some rocks and one staple right there. Staple. Crazy horse has been sick for a while. We, we had given him a full round of treatment for five weeks and he's not doing well at all. So we're hoping this uh, feeding tube and the antibiotics and the IVs they've given them are gonna help them. This is Max, his favorite spot to hang out because it's concrete and it's cooler. I found him uh, at a pet store. I went to this restroom and I see this tortoise, Max, was stuck in this place, had nowhere to go, nothing to eat, and was eating and chewing the drywall. It just broke my heart. And I let him out of the bathroom and walked around the store and he followed me. I asked the woman that owned the store about him and she wouldn't sell him for like less than $700. So every Sunday or Saturday I'd go to visit him and then I decided I can't leave him there. He's so friendly and he loves being hand fed stuff. And he's grown, he was originally like 60 pounds, he's about 100 pounds now. This is Mac getting, it's like getting your belly scratched. Right buddy? It's ticklish, his spine is right here like this. So he totally feels this, so when you do this, look at that, he's a ticklish guy. And uh, I just love him, it was like the best decision, you know, for me to spend that money and uh, and rescue him from a bad situation. Most of these tortoises are rescued from really bad situations. Some of them I bought outright, some were given to me. My whole journey into tortoise land and having a little zoo out there with tortoises 
began when I bought my home 12 years ago. I got the idea like, hey, I have a house, I have a piece of land, it's not big, but I could build a pen out back and I could get some land tortoises. So I found out about this organization, CTTC, California Turtle and Tortoise Club. They have chapters all over California. So I went to this meeting thinking like, nobody's gonna be there and I'm gonna be the biggest geek in the world, right? You know, it was like a woman that was 80 and there was kids, you know, with their families and there was everybody in between. There were like 45 people. All the people said what they had. So I was like, oh, there's a whole different world of uh, tortoises out there. So I signed up for adoption. I'm like, I'll, I'll take whatever you guys can get me. So they started hitting me up and going, hey, this pet store closed. And we have these, you know, seven tortoises. Can you want to take them? And I'm like, yeah. I couldn't say no. So I built a big old pen out there. Learned about how you house them. And I ended up with 27. I call these my exotics because the big guys that you've been seeing, the babies, those are African sulcatas. But I also got into uh, other rare species from around the world. So these guys live up here in this pen. I let them down, I let them out there, on usually on Sundays when I clean their pen. But this is an endangered, rare and endangered species. Most of these are, which is really sad, but this one really is critically endangered. And I got these babies from somebody like seven years ago. So they're seven years old. So you see the difference in somebody like this, the African sulcata, fertile myrtle, who's seven years old, and this guy is seven years old. And as they get older, they're radiated. Look at their shells. And these guys are all so friendly. That's what's really cool. They're all so friendly. They're not afraid of me. So this one, pretty darn cool. It's called a cherry foot. And look at this coloring. Look at, look at that tail, right? Like a dinosaur. See how concave this is, right? Really pronounced on him. But the reason is it's because he's so concave. See, he can easily do that. So that's sometimes how you can tell the boys from the girls. This is gonna be Crazy Horse's first feeding at home. We pull back on it, see what comes out. That's the fluids that he has in his stomach, you know? So we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm learning this first time. See this tube goes down into his throat, see that? And goes into his stomach, right? So now we're gonna take this off. What they said is we, I very slowly pushed this down into this tube. So we have high hopes for the boy. He's been a tough guy. He's been here for 10 years. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, he'll be better. This is night three of feeding. This is feeding number four, huh, buddy? How you doing today, crazy horse? Hmm? How you doing, buddy? It's like, oh, he's pretty tired, huh? But he's being a trooper, dude. Myrtle. They rarely ever get to come out front here, so this is a whole new world for them. Ah, she's going to see what food we brought. So I'll go to the farmer's market on Sundays. I've been going to the same people. And this is a lot less food than I used to get, all right? It was crazy for a while. So since I've downsized the herd, it's way more reasonable. You get a case of fresh organic strawberries every week. They love them. You never know each week to week how good these are going to be. These are good. 
Right. You know, and the great thing about tortoises, they will eat anything. Oh, she's look at that. She's eating it. Nobody knows I have this world of tortoises here, and I don't want them to ever know. So there's double security gates. I got cameras. You know, alarm system. So this is like Kevin's secret world back here. I'd love to tell you that it's enough food to last a week, but it's not. Usually I run out of food, even with the little smaller herd, I run out of food by like Fridays sometimes, depending on when it's real warm. But I get scrap, different kinds of kale, romaines, whatever they have, whatever I can get. Spend about 20 minutes feeding everybody, making sure they have fresh water, and then jump in the shower and run off to work. They get four or five heads of lettuce a day. Down below, those guys get about 10 heads of lettuce. Nothing goes to waste, right? One of the best things these guys can eat is Timothy hay. And I go to the equestrian center in Burbank, and for $32, I get a huge bale. There's six, five more bags out back. This lasts me months. So worst case scenario, if I run out of food, guess what? Boom, throw that down. That's what they would be eating in nature. They much would rather eat all the nice greens and corn and stuff I give them. But guess what? If I'm out of food or whatever, they get fresh water and they get hay, and they're gonna be fine. And then all the rest of this, all the rest of this then goes in the fridge in the garage. And then I take it out every morning, try to make it last for the week. And so now it's become a lot less of a job than it used to be because it started not being fun anymore when I had so many and I didn't say no to any that came in and it was costing so much money and time and I was getting resentful, you know, and not really having fun. Now I'm back to like, I have fun, you know, I love these guys. They need me, I need them. And, uh, and they're not going anywhere. Where you going, Lumpy? Ah, oh, he's going under the car. No! She's going under the car. No! <laughs> Alright, I want to show you something. Come on back here. Earlier this year, the coolest thing happened in all the 12 years I've been raising tortoises. I recognized that two of the female big sulcatas were pregnant. And you can tell because they start digging, digging, digging everywhere. I asked my partner, he said, can you go out there every now and then and take a look and see if something's going on? And because I had an incubator ready standing by. And lo and behold, he calls me and he sends me a video. This is the eighth one. I was at work and I was just elated. I'm like, oh my God, not only were they laying eggs, but he was picking each one up and putting them in the incubator. This is an incubator. I bought it a million years ago, you know, and I never used it because they never laid eggs. This is where all the eggs eventually ended up. You still have shell remnants and stuff. So this is where they incubated. Keeps the temperature regulated. The warmer the temperature, around 90, it's either all boys or all girls. And the lower the temperature, it's the other sex. So I kept it around 88, thinking middle of the road maybe. I never thought I would have that many. I thought there were going to be 10 babies. I had no idea what to expect because the first clutch that laid, there were 12 eggs and only three hatched. So I figured, okay, 45 eggs, I'm going to end up with 15 at the most. I can handle 15. I can find homes for them. Well. 36 babies later, that's what happened. Oh my God, these little tiny replicas of mom and dad hatch. You know, to see their little noses poke out and then their arms and then the whole thing was just fascinating and beautiful and made me cry. And after those three hatched, time came now for the rest of them and they started popping like uh, popcorn. 
and I would come home from work and there'd be like two more hatched. And then in the next morning there were two more, two more, you know, it was insane. I was thrilled and I was kind of terrified. Then I got a little nervous because I'm like, oh, there are so many. One of them was super premature and he survived. And I'm real proud of that as a dad, like that knew nothing about raising little babies. The average in the incubator was 12 weeks, uncanny, to the day. Maybe plus a day, minus a day, I'd start seeing them hatch. That last batch that I did not incubate, that was 17 weeks, you know? They were in a pot. I, then I brought them in here the last couple weeks, and I didn't want to throw them out. I didn't have the heart. I figured they're way past their due. But I also realized they weren't incubated, so the temperature wasn't as warm as it would be or as regular. And I just kept them here, and I said, I'm just going to see. And sure enough, they started hatching. Bath time. So what I do is I put lukewarm water. Just enough water to cover them, but not so much so if they flip over, they're gonna drown. And the warm water encourages their body to absorb it. Because even if they don't drink it, they can't help but absorb it. These are my older tortoises, okay? There's a dozen of them. He's Uno, he was the first guy born. And then over here, this is for my little babies. The little babies all hatched within the last three weeks. And the last guy that hatched, I put a little red mark on them. They have a belly button, just like you and me, okay? And when they're born, they're born in the egg, and they have a yolk sac. Huge yolk sac, so when they sit in that egg and they poke through, they can sit in that egg for days and they slowly absorb that yolk sac and that gives them energy and that gives them strength. And over time, that yolk sac, uh, that belly button, just disappeared. And I got into some arguments with people or saying I had no business to do this, to hatch big tor tortoises that are gonna be the third, that are the third largest species in the world and I didn't have, I shouldn't do this and it's bad. You know, and everybody has their opinion. And for whatever reasons in life, I just had to do it this one time, you know? They, they legs were laid and somebody was home to pick them up and incubate them. And uh, that's a first. And um, so I felt like right or wrong, I just had to do it. Okay, so we're gonna put them all up, get them in here, bring them in the other room. Soak them in some water. Okay, here we go. Let's go, guys. We take these guys, they go in the bigger one, and they like the warm water actually. Go in the water! You can tell how healthy a tortoise is, and one way is how heavy they are. If they're nice and heavy, that means they're getting plenty of water and food. I have 36 babies that hatched over the course of six months. And one of the things I'm really proud of is that I haven't lost one. Two of them were super premature, like half the size. And one of them is right here, little runty, and you can't even tell anymore. See this guy? His shell's a little wrinkled and stuff. He was half the size. Oh, hello, lady. Hi, babes. And what are the odds, 12 years ago when I moved into this house, hi, girl, huh, that uh, I would find the most amazing next door neighbor who doesn't, doesn't really like reptiles, but you know, guess who won me over? Yeah. These little guys. She always come over every day to check on the tortoises and dogs, but since these baby hatched, they always flipping over, huh? Yes. They used to With be their out arms here. in the air, help, I've fallen over and can't get up, so I'm you know, making check marks for my old age. <laughs> and she texts me and says, I rescued four today and I did my job. And I'm sorry to see them go, but I know it's to a better place. Okay, today is April 3rd, Friday, 2015. All right, it's been a very fertile year this year, and look at this. Okay. For like the third time this year. Who's here? Who's here? Fertile Myrtle, look at her. Hi, Fertile Myrtle. What's she doing? Digging a nest. She's gonna lay eggs, huh, girl? She is gonna lay eggs. She's a fertile girl. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Not gonna, not gonna incubate these. Nope. We got enough, huh? Yeah. Okay, 
guys, you're all soaked up. We're gonna put you back. You're gonna eat your breakfast, right? Here we go. So they go back in their little house. Normally, I just put warm water in here in the mornings for fresh grass, so they get out. There's a little bit of strawberry treat waiting for them. One thing about tortoises, you cannot have tortoises and not be dirty. That's why tortoises and reptiles are not good for kids, because you gotta wash your hands thoroughly. You just got hot water, antibacterial soap. You wash your hands with hot water every time, you're never gonna have a problem. 31 of the babies I was able to rehome through the organization CTTC. They found some cool place up in Northern California with a big piece of land with a woman who knows how to raise them and she was going to give them the kind of life I could never give them. It was a sad day but it was a happy day because they went somewhere really great. It's kind of hard. <laughs> I know, I'm Pucka. It's kind of hard, you know? Even though I know they're going to a good place. <laughs> so, this is the beginning and the end for the babies. A new beginning. I'll let you know how it goes. So, you know, when I get to come out here and do this on Sunday mornings, it's my connection to spirituality. It's my connection to nature. To see these creatures that have been around for so many hundreds of millions of years, you know, thriving here, and knowing that out in nature, almost all of them are endangered or worse. I don't see myself ever giving Max up. He's in my living trust. Or these other guys, I'm kind of like good now with the amount of tortoises I have, it's manageable, it doesn't take my whole week. I didn't know what I was doing when I started, and I still have a long way to go, you know, but uh, it's been quite a journey, you know, and um, fascinating one too. They have brought me joy, they brought a lot of flies and all kinds of stuff to the house, but I have no regrets. And if somebody called me and they had a tortoise that needed a home, I would take them in. So that's the story of how it all began. But since then, so much more has happened. So give us a like, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, tell your family, because starting now, episodes of The Tortoise Guy are coming your way. You guys want to come and meet Max? Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's a big turtle. He's a big boy, right? Watch your fingers, he's not going to hurt you. Look at that. Oh, he will splat you, though. Oh, there's another one. She's laying it right now. Can you get in there? Look at it. That, that egg is coming right out of her tail, right there. <gasps> the reason I help out Kevin is because he really is truly dedicated. And that's what I find really remarkable, because there aren't many people that can hold a full-time job and still have this passion and do something about it. And he really does. Oh my God. Lori, help me! Ah, oh, the tortoise guy. Ha, 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 ha,